Hey, what's up? Right now, I'm in front of one of my favorite international grocery stores in the world, the J International Food Company here in the Tower Grove neighborhood in St. Louis. I'm here because I need to restock my pantry with international stuff, and I need to do some shopping for an upcoming recipe video. Today, I'm gonna take you through the store and show you the stuff that I normally get when I'm restocking my pantry, and I'm gonna show you a few things that I find interesting along the way that you might not have ever seen in a grocery store. So let's get started. So right when you walk into the store, that's where they keep all of the varieties of international rice that's available, like Indian, Thai, Japanese, Chinese, Every type of cuisine uses a different type of rice. Recently, I tried a new type of rice, which was quite exotic. It's like an extra long grain basmati rice, which they use in Iranian cooking. I tried to make a dish called tadik, which is like a crispy rice dish. And it was really hard. I didn't get it right. If you got any tadik tips in the comments, please let me know. I have another uh, like nine pounds of that rice still at home to get through. So <laughs> I'm dedicated to figuring it out. Behind this, they have a whole wall of instant noodles like every type from all over the world. My favorite of all time though is a Korean ramen called Shin. What's up? Spicy flavor. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. I like Shin more than other types of ramen because number one, the size of the noodle puck that you get is gigantic. So more noodles is more fun. And the broth just tastes good. It's like savory, spicy. I don't know how else to describe it. It's not like meat flavored. It kind of just tastes like umami spicy. It's really fun. In this general section, they've got cold stuff. Some of the stuff that I get from here is firm tofu. That's one of my favorite new ingredients that I've never had. Until like three months ago, I thought tofu was a bad ingredient, but this pressed stuff is quite dry and has the texture of like hard scrambled eggs. That sounds weird, but it's delicious, especially when fried really hard in a wok. These other types of tofus can't stand up to that constant tossing and they fall apart. And they're probably, in my opinion, only good in like Korean soup stews and like in Mapo tofu. I just, it's too soft for me, not my favorite. The other thing that I always get over here is pickled sushi ginger, both types. I really like the sweeter, crunchier, thin slice stuff. This goes on top of salads, it's really good. Um, and just like a delicious pickle. If you want something to taste kind of sweet, kind of tart with that like pungent ginger aroma. And then the, the stick shaped longer stuff, this is what goes in the Japanese frittery pancake stuff like okonomiyaki and takoyaki. Check out that takoyaki video, by the way. This goes in that recipe. The other thing over here that I really, really like is kimchi. We buy like two and a half to three pounds of it at a time. This big dog jar is like 10 days worth of kimchi for us. And I pick this up every time. They do sell it in like 10 pound jars, just in case you got a big Korean family. The only bad kimchi that I've had in America is the stuff that they sell at like the regular grocery store. So if you're gonna be trying to eat kimchi at the right on the regular at home, definitely check it out at the international grocery store. One of my favorite parts about this store and international grocery stores in general is that they're gonna have vegetables that you can't get at other stores. One of them is these smaller Shanghai style bok choy, super crunchy. Uh, they take a sear and a wok really well or just like any kind of saute. We eat a lot of bok choy right now. Um, they also have Chinese broccoli, Chinese celery, uh, yu choy all kinds of Asian greens that are really great for sauteing. Oh, one last thing you can get here that I think is pretty sick is uh, fresh tamarind pods. If you were interested in making your own tamarind paste for something like pad thai or any of those Thai desserts that use the sweet sour thing that tamarind has, like this might be a cool way to check it out. It's got a really raisiny intense flavor that the concentrate and the pulp that you buy, just it's not really the same. And you definitely couldn't get that at a regular grocery store. What is this? Banana blossom? What the? I've literally never seen this before. What do you do with this? Tell me. You're getting it? Why not? Yeah. Should I? Sure. Now I'm like afraid, should I put it back? <laughs> but okay, we'll get it next time. Like when, if somebody tells me what you do with banana blossom, I just put it in the cart like kind of instinctively. Ooh, Indian eggplants, these little baby eggplants. These are cool. They're very small, bulbous. Uh, they're kind of like Japanese eggplant in that they're less bitter than the Italian ones and the skin is thinner. So better, in my opinion. Shrimp chips. Now we're in the Thai section. So they've got all of the noodles that you would need to make like real pad Thai. These like medium sized rice sticks are what I usually get. I've got some of these at home right now. They've got a bunch of different types of fish sauce here. I usually go for red boat fish sauce. That's my favorite. 
tastes really good. Some of the other Thai stuff that I like is over here. We've got this preserved radish. That goes in Pad Thai too. I go for the sweet over the salty. It's like a pre-cut salty preserved radish. You can get the whole ones too. They look kind of wild. Like what, that's radish, that's crazy. Ooh, behind you is this uh, pickled mustard green. These go inside of cow soy. They're crunchy and tart like sauerkraut, but they're mustard greens. I'm gonna grab these actually. Real quick, future Brian here. I just wanna take a quick second to thank ShipStation for sponsoring this video. I am a YouTube chef and a small business owner. And if you're either one of those things, then you know that just a little bit of automation can be a real lightsaber. Saver, not lightsaber, saver. Like I would be so stoked if I could just write a recipe and then all of the groceries for that recipe would just show up magically at my house. ShipStation is kind of like the shipping version of that. It pulls together all of your orders into one easy to use dashboard from everywhere that you sell online, like eBay, Etsy, and Amazon. And once you've set up an account, ShipStation automates as much as possible to save you as much time as possible. You could specify the particular type of packaging you want for a t-shirt versus a coffee mug. You can easily print shipping labels and you can compare shipping costs and save yourself up to 84% on USPS and UPS. Plus, once an order ships, ShipStation automatically sends tracking updates right to your customers. So to spend more time growing your business when you automate all of your shipping tasks with ShipStation, go to ShipStation.com slash Lagerstrom and you'll get a free 60-day trial just to see how much time you'll save. Again, that's ShipStation.com slash Lagerstrom. Thank you, ShipStation. Now we're getting into the more Chinese ingredients. One thing over here that you might not have in your pantry, but you probably should, is Shing cooking wine. Uh, it's right here. This is in a lot of Chinese stir fry recipes and it's different from what we would call cooking wine here in the West because it doesn't really taste like wine and it has salt in it. So don't drink it because it doesn't taste that good. But it still has some of that aromatic estery quality that those like a boozy white wine would have. And if you make a stir fry that calls for it and you leave it out or sub in mirin, it's just not the same. Mirin is a little bit sweeter than this is. So Shaoxing, check it out, pretty cool. Um, I've got a bunch of this at home. And then right next to there is a really, another super common ingredient, which is Chinese black vinegar. You would mix this with soy sauce to dip dumplings in or season a dish like uh, Kung Pao chicken, pretty special. So now we're coming up into the Indian ingredient section and they have 500 different types of dal and beans. Uh, I'm in the middle of developing a recipe for a Southern Indian dish called dosa, which is like a crispy lentil pancake filled with curried potatoes, or at least that's one variation of it. So I need a specific type of lentil uh, called an urad dal. And then they've got like all of your like off the shelf chutneys and pastes and stuff like that. You can get a different type of uh, tamarind paste over here than you would get in the Thai section. This one has like garlic added to it, cardamom, cinnamon. So it's more of like a curry paste. Uh, well, they call it a chutney. So it's kind of like a tamarind chutney. Now we're moving more into the Korean section and Laura and I are big Korean food fans. Seoul, Korea was one of our favorite trips of all time. So we eat a lot of Korean food at home. We cook a lot of Korean food. They've got your standard issue gochujang. So you would use that if you were making jjigae or stews. A lot of the Korean sauces are made with gochujang. They've got samjang here, which is a combination of doenjang and gochujang. So it's kind of like half miso, half chili paste with like ginger, garlic, sugar, and a little vinegar. This would be like a finished condiment that you would use for like a lettuce wrap with bulgogi. Very delicious. They've got Korean chicken sauce, which I guess is the stuff that you would put on Korean fried chicken if you weren't gonna make it yourself. So you got gochujang, corn syrup, the gochugaru paste, all the stuff you would want to make chicken taste good. Love that. And then jarred fermented glutinous rice, of course. You don't wanna miss that. Look at that. That's pretty wild. What's that even for? Is that a soup? I don't know what that's for. That's cool though. We're gonna grab that. We're gonna we're gonna mess around with that later on. And then you got, now we're moving to the Japanese section. You've got the dancing baby on the QP mayonnaise. <laughs> QP mayonnaise, if you're not familiar, is just like a very savory, very creamy mayonnaise. They use extra egg yolks in it to give it a little bit more of like a thicker mouthfeel. And it's very tart and there's MSG in it. So it kind of really uh, perks up your tongue. One of the most well-known international ingredients that you usually cannot get. Yeah, I have a recipe to make your own in one of my videos, the takoyaki video, I think, if you wanted to 
make your own. And then you got yakisoba sauce, which is like basically Japanese barbecue sauce. Easy to make yourself at home from stuff you've probably already got, but this is what it tastes like in Japan. Like I think a lot of them use like a pre-bottled sauce. Because the barbecue sauce, the yakisoba sauce that they put on okonomiyaki and takoyaki, it's like a fast food. It's not artisanal, or at least for me, the stuff I had in Japan. It wasn't fancy boy stuff. It was just like squeezing Heinz out of a bottle, basically the, the equivalent of that. This stuff is sick. They've got all these curry uh, mixes here, golden curry. Uh, I'm actually gonna get one of these because I'm working on a tonkatsu recipe. So I kind of want to get an idea of what the Japanese brown gravy flavor is like. Um, anyways, they call it curry. I don't really know how to describe it other than that. It's imagine taking like a powdered American gravy and adding ginger, a little bit of sugar, and maybe a little bit of warm Indian spice to it. That's a great way to describe it. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's super different from like Southeast Asian curries. Ooh, this is one of my favorite things in this entire store. This is called furikake, and it's a, they call it rice seasoning, but it's basically just a bunch of blended up umami stuff. And they've got a bunch of different types too. This one has multiple types of seaweed in it and tons of MSG, damn. This one has spiciness in it, horseradish, shrimp, shrimp stuff, <laughs> uh, onion, ginger. I haven't tried this one, and fried shallots. Let's get that one. Oh yeah, so this is more like hot pepper spread for like Turkish, Bosnian style cooking. This roasted pepper spread is pretty tasty. A lot of variety. You could use this as a base for a stew. You could throw it in with some roasted eggplant or it's really great with potatoes too. It's called Ajvar. I think I said that wrong. Oh, what is this? Suka fermented cocoa nectar. Is this like, I, I would imagine this is like Indonesian or something. Fermented cocoa. We're near the Philippines section. Oh yeah, it totally is. Yeah, I worked with this Filipino guy who used this for staff meal one time. Spiced natural coconut vinegar. Ah, that's what it is. It says, it says right on the thing. I'm gonna try this, this is cool. I remember him making a really cool braised pork dish with this uh, vinegar. It was pretty, pretty freaking wild. He also brought in fertilized duck eggs for staff meal one time. Mm. Um, that wasn't my favorite. There's like a beak in it and it, you know, it's as crispy as you would think. You're kind of excited to try something new and then instantly once you have a uh, like a hard boiled partially cooked baby duck in your mouth you're a little like not for me so they've usually got a bunch of cool frozen dumplings here so if you're a dumper fan like me you can get like nine different types of gyoza they got pork dumplings shumai what's up frozen shumis steam bun mozzarella cheese fish sausage corn dog don't leave without those, bro. Holy sh**. Mozzarella cheese and fish sausage corn dog. That is a lot of things at once. They've also got a huge cheese case, but most of the cheeses are like Middle Eastern or Western Mediterranean. This Valbriso stuff is like a French sheep's milk feta. Really, really salty, but really creamy. This smokes anything you're gonna get at, you know, your regular grocery store or Trader Joe's or whatever. They've got halloumi here a bunch of different types of fermented milks, and then Bulgarian white cheese. What's up? Akawi white cheese, Syrian cheese, Bulgarian cheese, Greek worded cheese. Oh my God. They got frozen durian here. It's uh, a stinky fruit. I've never had durian before, but it's supposed to be super creamy. Look how dangerous this looks. They put it in a wrapping so that you don't like cut yourself, but I mean, it's still super sharp. You want to mess around with some durian later? I think we should, but let's keep it outside. Stink fruit going in. One thing that I always get when I come to an international grocery store is raw chicken feet. I think they stock them for Chinese dim sum style dishes, but what I use them for is to make chicken stock a lot more full bodied because these are full of gelatin. So when you cook them slowly, that goes out into the soup and makes for a really delicious kind of stick to your lips broth that has a ton of body to it. So definitely get those. Another thing I usually get here is dried chili. My favorite dried chili of all time though is probably a guajillo chili. Raisiny, sweet. Oh, I wouldn't say it's smoky because it's not a smoked chili, but it does have a really dark kind of mysterious flavor. I usually use this for stuff like enchilada sauce. I'm gonna grab a big bag of these. Another thing that I get here pretty often are these vermicelli mung bean noodles. This is what you would use for pad wun sen. And unfortunately you have to buy like five or 10 pounds of it at once. But you know it's a legit store when they're selling stuff in bulk because the Thai restaurants are coming to buy these. This is probably enough to make 50 orders of Pad Wun Sen. 
uh, but it's cheap. This is like five or six dollars worth of noodles. We've got a bunch of these at home from when I made the video, so I'm not gonna get them. Next to this though is one of my favorite things in this whole store. I've probably said that quite a few times, but they got a bunch of chili crisp here, specifically this uh, Lao Ganma brand with the old lady on it. I think that's a lady. This one has fermented soybeans in it and a bunch of fried crispy onions. So it tastes kind of like Thanksgiving green bean casserole. And the beans that are in it are fried too. So they're kind of crispy and they pop in your mouth. It tastes really different from a lot of the chili crisps that I have. And it's very dark flavored, really good on rice. I ate this for dinner with rice last night. One of my favorite parts about this whole experience is picking up a bunch of snacks to eat on the ride home. I already got some shrimp chips, but let's see crispy white sardine chips. Those are going in the cart. They usually have some pretty cool international chip flavors. Like this looks like Thai basil chili. That's definitely gonna get tried. Uh, what else we got here? Cilantro and shrimp flavored, I think. Oh. Another thing I like to get are these roasted seaweed flakes. These are awesome on top of rice. Lauren eats rice, seaweed, and kimchi for breakfast with a fried egg, like three or four days a week. And look at this young gentleman. He looks very polite. Don't you think? Wholesome. That's what a lot of Korean men look like. They have very good skin. Uh, let's get some sweet treats too. I think I saw some wafers over here. Yes. Green tea wafers. That looks pretty fun. Cappuccino sticks. These are kind of cool. These will come with like a fancy coffee in Korea or Japan on the side. What are these coconut ball cookies? Those kind of look like kind of the mints that they put at diners by the exit. I don't know what's up with those. All right. Let's check out. So that's just a very small sampling of the stuff that I find interesting and often buy at the international grocery store. The people at Jay hosted us today and they're super sweet. And if you ever find yourself here in the Tower Grove neighborhood in St. Louis, definitely check it out. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of this video and let me know what you guys get every time you go international grocery shopping. As always, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video and we'll see you next time.